What's up guys, Nolan here, and a while back I made a video covering the alternatives to Tarkov, and given the recent community controversies, I figured I'd revisit the subject, especially now that I've played the games that I hadn't at the time, I can give a much better answer, and we've even had a few new names pop up which I'll discuss. The criteria for me for games that work as alternatives revolve around the raid system in particular, and it's what I'm going to focus on here. For example, Arma. Arma has lots of mods that can do exactly what you can do in Tarkov, but it's just not the same. So for a game to qualify, the core gameplay must revolve around limited resources that you risk to either progress in the game or provide you with some kind of benefit to your ability to progress in the game. So you risk something to gain something and depending on what those somethings are will make or break the game for me. So we are going to be basing it off of that raid structure and something important to remember is that not all raids are created equal with a perfect example being today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends. Raids full of super tough bosses that drop some amazing rewards if you're able to take them out. Let's see who you'll be up against. The dragon. It can poison you. It's got fire breath. It can decrease your attack. This dragon will eat you alive if you're not prepared. Bringing champions who can sap the dragon's attacks and defense is a good idea, as well as someone who can poison it right back. The fire knight. You'll want to bring champions who can deal multiple hits to break through this guy's shield quickly. The ice golem. With his two buddies in tow, this frosty foe will freeze you solid. If you can decrease the golem's attack and bring champions who can place a shield on your party, you should be able to weather the blizzard. The spider queen can spawn other small spiders, which she can then feed on to heal herself and increase her damage. Luckily, all four starter champs come with a powerful AoE attack so they can squash all the mini spiders. Then we have the Minotaur. This raging bull has got quite the temper. He starts the fight in a rage, massively increasing his damage, and he's also got the ability to place a hex on you that doubles the damage you receive from his attacks. But that's not all because love is in the air even in the world of raid. New players can enjoy a special Valentine's Day themed adventure with the raid love quest. All you need to do to get involved is download Raid Shadow Legends from the links below, copy your in-game player ID, and then head to raid love quest.polarium.com. There, enter your player ID and set out on the Heartfelt Quest, running from February 14th to March 14th. Play one of the Valentine's themed mini games for a chance to win some fantastic in-game and real-life prizes, including Valentine's Day themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. If you are an existing raid player, you can still share the love too. Use a special promo code STVALENTINE23 that everyone can use to get a small Valentine's gift from us to you. But there's more. New players use the link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. So what are you waiting for? All the links you need are in the description or the top comment. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. So again, let's keep in mind what makes Tarkov Tarkov, and I genuinely don't think it comes down to an easy list of features, but the total package that you get through gameplay and the risk-reward system of raids. The games that pop up constantly would have to be Hunt Showdown, Cycle Frontier, Marauders, Call of Duty DMZ mode, and surprisingly, a mobile game called Arena Breakout. Some games that deserve mentions are Dead Drop, PUBG, Road to Vostok, and Stalker for very different reasons, which we'll go over those. Now, TLDR, all the discussions aside, if you want a real alternative, my advice is you check out Hunt Showdown. I think it does the thing well enough to scratch the itch, but it absolutely does not replace the full package of gameplay that you get from Tarkov, especially when it comes to the modern weapons, since it's using 19th century weaponry and a lot of melee. But there is an interesting bit of gameplay that comes from that, I'll admit. So again, if you are looking for Tarkov, of alternatives, I would check out Hunt Showdown for sure. The reason I don't play it more is because of the tracking system at the end of the raid after you kill the boss. I hate that the other players know where I am. Otherwise, I revisit it from time to time and do play it, but it is a shadow compared to what Tarkov is to me personally. There's a lot of bias there because for some reason or another, unfortunately, Tarkov has me by the balls and I just can't seem to enjoy other survival shooters for a long period of time without comparing it to Tarkov or wanting to play Tarkov after. Then once a bad day of dying in Tarkov, Tarkov comes around, I look for alternatives, and the cycle just continues back and forth. Anyway, that's the TLDR on what I see as the closest, but in case you want to see what else I've found out there, there's actually several. Starting with either released or beta released games, since you know Tarkov is a quote unquote beta, even though it's nowhere near a beta and it's still in development, but they call it a beta, I'll go ahead and include betas here. Either way, we've got Cycle Frontier. I played a couple dozen hours or so, and I thought it was super interesting, and I absolutely loved how quickly you got into the games. The understanding that I got from it, however, is you essentially stood no chance against groups if you were playing solo, while if you had a higher tier gun or equipment, you just win. Simple as that. The thing about Tarkov is you could literally have a single bullet and make a raid out of it. In Cycle, that's just not the case. Generally, after a few wins and losses, I just got the overall feeling that it just wasn't it. It just didn't really feel fun or good to me, and I couldn't really put a finger on why. Unfortunately, the same could be said for Marauders, and I know it's early access, so we'll see what they end up doing with it. These are the same people that made Hell Let Loose, and I 
really like the gunplay in that, but for some reason, I just got the same feeling here as I do with Cycle. It just ain't it. Seriously, that's the only way that I can describe it. It's just, I just didn't like it. I just didn't get into it. All the pieces were there. I should like it, but it just wasn't it. And this is a good slot for an honorable mention here with Dark and Darker. A lot of people are asking me about Dark and Darker along with Marauders and Cycle and Hunt Showdown. And Dark and Darker just isn't it for me either. It's just, it's the melee combat. I know there's magic. I know there's the Ranger and I know that you can shoot bows and stuff like that. And I get the concept is there for me, but there's something weird about it where you're standing pretty much right in front of the person that you're trying to fight against. And it's just kind of weird, janky movement side to side stuff. And it's not, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. It's just weird that that is how the fights go down to me. But purely speaking, because there isn't guns and because I have not played Dark and Darker at all, I can't give proper feedback on it. So if you are somebody that would like that kind of gameplay, if you like the heavy melee, if you like the magic, if you play a lot of D&D, &D, you actually might end up liking Dark and Darker. So I suggest that you check it out for sure. But again, when it comes to Cycle Frontier, Marauders, and Dark and Darker, unfortunately, it just, it, I just don't like them. I don't know why. I can't really put a finger on it, but I don't enjoy playing them. So that's why they're not here. Now, next is something that I was really excited for. And in bits and pieces, I do like playing, but it really let me down almost immediately on release. And that was Call of Duty's DMZ mode. This was a legitimate AAA big money, big studio attempt at the genre. Although I don't care what any of them actually say, in case you didn't know, they had some devs say that they weren't trying to be Tarkov, which I get. But when you look at the systems, the location, and for real, just look at the logo. I mean, come on. DMZ is just overall weak. However, if you do have a friend who only plays Call of Duty or console games, and you're trying to get them to make the move to PC, or if they're already interested, then get them on DMZ so that they can get the vibes, because I think it would be a perfect warm-up for the mindset that Tarkov kind of creates once they do get that PC. Literally in no other situation do I think this is useful. If I, for whatever reason, wanted to play Call of Duty, I would just play Warzone over DMZ, even though DMZ is much closer to Tarkov. I like the gameplay of Warzone better than DMZ, personally. Neither hold a flame to the experience that you get from playing Tarkov, but they can be fun while the gunplay and movement is good for an arcade shooter, in my opinion. And honestly, that's it when it comes to playable games that aren't on mobile. Yes, I said mobile, because for some reason or another, a close alternative to Tarkov is this mobile game, Arena Breakout. They wanted to pay me a lot of money to play their game and talk about it, but I turned it down because this just isn't it. It's a game made for mobile devices that is ported to PC. That is that is backwards. That is not what we do here. And not only is that the case, but literally every piece of the game screams that that is the case. This does not look like a PC game. It doesn't play like a PC game. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually do play mobile games. Hell, this video is sponsored by one. I swear on my life, I play all the time, but it's a strategy game that you can idle, not a first person shooter. Even having grown up with Game Boys and PSP, I understand mobile games. I just can't see myself ever wanting to play a competitive shooter on a mobile device. And it's honestly laughable to me that you would play a game like this on a PC when you have perfectly good purpose-built PC shooters right there. And in case there's already neckbeards typing in the comments, I get it. I get the accessibility of being able to play these kinds of games on mobile. I'm not saying you're a bad person for liking it, or I'm not saying you're dumb for liking it, or wanting to like it, or playing it, or whatever. That's all good, but it's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about all alternatives to escape from Tarkov, which most people can barely run on a full PC, so why would a mobile game be an alternative to that? That's what I'm talking about. However, everything else seems to be there, and I do really mean everything else, is practically every single piece of this game seems to be ripped straight from Tarkov, down to the UI and even kind of how you move around the map and stuff like that. It just looks like a mobile game and has microtransactions for everything. So yeah, it's just, it's just, just this isn't it. This just isn't it completely, but I figured I'd mention it. Now, what is an interesting interesting transition to the work in progress games here is coincidentally another mobile game coming from PUBG, or at least a version of it will be. PUBG, aka Player Unknown, who are the devs behind PUBG, they're the PU in PUBG, is working on their next big release, which is, quote, a competitor to Escape from Tarkov, and it will come to all platforms, PC, console, and mobile. Now, what's different about this is PUBG on PC is not the same as PUBG on mobile. They are built differently, which I would assume the same would be happening here with this new game, but it's way too early to tell. Given the driving factors behind PUBG though, I find it really hard to believe that they'll go for a game with the same aesthetics as Tarkov. They really go for like the wide, big game kind of gameplay, where Tarkov should be a little bit on the quieter side, but maybe they wanted something that was as far as possible from PUBG. We'll see what happens with it. Now interestingly enough, what isn't too early in development is Dead Drop. Well, at least not too early to play because they are allowing backers to play immediately, and I've already played a few hours of it myself. Now it was in Greybox and has a long way to 
to go. But I'll keep it simple here and just say it does the things you want it to do if you play Tarkov for the PvP. If you play Tarkov specifically for the survival aspects, then this isn't going to be for you. But don't worry, there's a couple other ones on the list that we're going to talk about in a second. What I'm thinking is Dead Drop will not be competition for the base game Escape from Tarkov. However, Arena will for sure be bumping shoulders with it. Dead Drop has a new snapshot coming on March 17th where they reveal larger portions of the project piece by piece. That is the snapshot. And based off of some of the small teases that we've gotten, it sounds like this is when the AI are going to make their first appearance, aka their scavs. And again, that's going to be on March 17th. We don't know when Arena will pop up, but last we heard was they wanted to show off some proper gameplay around New Year's and then decided not to show it last second. The timing might actually match up pretty well here. So that's the PvP, the fast paced side of the stuff covered. I genuinely do believe Dead Drop is going to be a good alternative there. However, it's not done yet and it's got a long way to go. Now, speaking of in development and a bit quirky, we do have Ghosts of Tabor or Tabor, however you want to pronounce that. This is VR and I don't think you can play it without VR, as in I don't think they plan on making it PC. I think it's going to stay VR. Personally, I don't think I'll get too into VR, but if this game keeps looking the way it's looking, I'll probably have to end up taking the leap. Everything in this game looks to be right out of Tarkov's playbook, and although it's interesting because it's in VR, it's also kind of just annoying because it's VR. You'll have to do the whole gimmick of having the free space and equipment to play, and this is when I don't necessarily fully trust VR yet myself, and I'm sure plenty of you feel the same. Now, purely just out of curiosity, I'll probably end up getting a VR setup to try this out, but it for sure won't be until after I end up moving this summer, so nothing until after that move. Now, last but not least, there are two games I think fit almost perfectly with Tarkov as alternatives, and they would be perfect fits as alternatives if they both had just one thing that they are missing on purpose, and that is multiplayer. These are single player games. The two games that I wanted to mention are Road to Vostok and Stalker. Escape from Tarkov is inspired by Stalker, but it just has multiplayer. It's also not sci-fi. The aesthetics are spot on, and the control scheme works great along with the story and progression. In fact, the true reason Tarkov even exists is because BSG needed funds to create a non-fiction stalker game they were going to call Russia 2028. As far as I know, they still intend to do that, but no shot that this game comes out by 2028, so I highly doubt it will be called Russia 2028. Maybe they'll just call it Russia 2038, but we'll see. Now, what is interesting here is that BSG were not the only ones to have that idea. As I kid you not, Road to Vostok is the exact same thing. It's a single-player, story-driven game just like Stalker, inspired heavily by Stalker, just just not sci-fi, and the region is practically the same. Everything about it is extremely similar. And again, I'm talking about Russia 2028 and the ideas that they had for Russia 2028. So if you're looking for an alternative to Tarkov in these troubling times, and you're okay with rolling solo, I would check out Stalker and keep an eye on Road to Vostok, both of which will have videos of their own on this channel in the future, along with Dead Drop and probably Ghost of Tabor, but again, the, the VR stuff. I gotta figure out the VR stuff. Nice Guy Tarkov is going to start taking some vacations away from Tarkov every now and then, but I know just as well as most of you, I can never actually escape, so we'll see what happens ahead. But that's going to do it for today, guys. If you like this video, there's a button for that. Subscribe for more like it, or jump in the comments with any ideas of alternatives that you think that I missed. If you're going to start naming the stalker mods, trust me, I know. More videos later. Follow me on Twitter or join the Discord, both linked below. If you want to check out other games, then check out my other channels right here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.